Hi and welcome students. In this video I'll be covering Microsoft Publisher 2016 and how to create a logo. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you're creating a logo for a business, chances are that you already have a picture or group of pictures that you need to put together to create the logo. So let's go ahead and learn how to do that today. The first thing that we need to do is learn how to insert a picture into Publisher. And the way that we do that is we go to the Insert tab and then in the illustrations group you're going to see pictures. For my logo we're creating it for a dentistry so we're going to put a picture of a woman inside of a picture of a mirror so uh, the first thing that we have to do is get this picture of the mirror and so I'm going to double click that it's a very large picture and so I put it on the page. Now first thing I'm going to do is kind of move this off to my scratch area to the left side and work with it over here. Now you'll see that the height of this picture is 9.29 inches high by 7.59. Now let's say that I wanted to change the dimensions on this and I wanted the height to be 5 inches. I'd go right up here, I'll change the height from 9.29 to 5 and press enter and you'll see that it has decreased the height to only 5 and it already decreased the width to 4.09 from what it was before. So this is what's called aspect ratio. As I decrease the height, it decreased the width as well. Well, what if I want this to be an exact measurement of 5 for height and 6.5 for width? Well, I already have the height selected, so if I go here to width and I go 6.5 and I press enter, notice that the height changed as well. And now it's about 8 inches tall, which is not what I wanted. So if you want to uh, change the height without the width, what happens if I go over here and use the sizing handle? Well, you'll notice that the sizing handle has the same problem. As I decrease the height, the width also decreases. Well, that's only if I grab a corner sizing handle. What happens if I grab a side or the top? Well, now you'll see that the aspect ratio will change, and I can spend all day trying to figure out what these exact heights and widths are as I move and shrink and expand this, or what I could do is go to the size group and click the dialog box in the bottom right, and then right here you're going to see a button that says lock aspect ratio and that's currently checked. On most images this will be checked by default. And so if I uncheck this, now I could change the height and the width to the exact dimensions that I want. So I'm going to click OK and you'll see that now if I go up here and I change the height to 5 like I wanted and press enter and I change the width to 6.5 like I wanted, now you'll see that I have no issues doing that. Okay, And even if I wanted them to be switched, let's say 6.5 for the height, I type in 6.5 for the height, and 5 for the width, well, there we go. Maybe that looks a little bit better. So taking a look at what you're doing as you're creating your logo is very important to see what's more aesthetically pleasing. All right, so now that I have this done, you'll notice that this, lo or this mirror has a lot of this border in the sides and in the corners. I don't want that border to be on here anymore. So that what I need to do next is what's called cropping an image. To crop an image, you have to go to the Picture Tools Format tab the crop group and then click this button right here crop okay don't click the arrow on this one but right up here up at the top you click on crop and you'll see that crop handles will appear what these do is they allow you to hover over them and click and drag to decrease the amount of space that's actually used from your picture so you'll see as I decrease and move closer to just the area that I want this background starts to become very light, almost to the point where you cannot see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of the corners and sides in, just like that. And now you'll see that now just the picture of the mirror is within this crop area. Now once I have this area done, now I go back up to that crop button and I click it one more time and you'll see that now the background has been removed and I just have the picture of the mirror. So that's where I want to uh, get with this picture before I start adding in the picture of the woman. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and click away from this. Now I could either click in the scratch area or I could press escape to deselect it. And now we're going to learn how to uh, use a shape to um, eventually fill that picture within it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the insert tab and on the insert tab I'm going to go to the um, within the insert tab I'm going to go to the illustrations group and I'm going to click on shapes okay now with this shapes gallery open I'm going to choose oval which is this one right down here in basic shapes and I'll click on that 
and now within the oval I can start to draw my oval. So I'm just going to draw one like this and I'll go with what I think fits within that uh, mirror. And so I click on that and there we go. Okay, so now that I have the oval uh, drawn, let's go ahead and change the height right up here. And you'll notice that if I go to change the height, let's make the height on this one 2.5. And let's make the width 2. Notice that it is not set for aspect ratio by default. Okay, um, Shapes, when you enter them in, will not be set for aspect ratio. So you can resize them to any size that you want right up here in the size group. Alright, so now that we have that set, what I'm going to do next is fill the shape with a image. Okay, and so the way that we do that, and a lot of people don't really know how to do this, we go to the Drawing Tools Format tab, Shape Styles Group, and go to Shape Fill, and if I know that I want the picture of the woman to go within this shape, I'm going to go right down here to Picture. Okay, it's below all of the colors, below um, and right above the Gradient Texture and Pattern Fills. You click on Picture, and now you can choose Picture from a File. And I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to choose this picture right here. I click on that and you'll see that it will replace the inside um, color with the picture of the woman. Okay, And so now that that's there, now I can go right over here and put the picture over the mirror. Okay, And let's say that I want to use this as my company logo. Okay, Again, kind of an odd company logo, but we'll go with it. And so there we go. All right, so there's my logo. Now what I want to do is, let's say that I want this to go onto my letterhead somewhere. Well, the problem is this is a very big image right now, and if I go to move these, check out what happens. Oh, well, I just moved that, and now I have this still over here. Well, that's not very good. I want those two things to always move together. The way that I do that is I'm going to do Control-Z real quick, is I want to make all of this my logo. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to highlight or rather uh, click and drag over everything. Then the reason I do this in the scratch area is so that it doesn't conflict with anything on my letterhead. And so now that those two are selected, I'm going to go somewhere in the middle of them and right click and I'm going to go to save as picture. Okay. And let's say that um, I'm just going to call this one logo. All right. And I'll choose the destination and I'll click save. And now I always have this logo to use at any time. So the picture has been saved, but I also want the pictures to move together and I don't want to have to highlight them like this every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to group. Now that it's grouped together you'll notice that you don't see the inside picture listed as a different um, uh, border so now it's just one and I can click and drag. Now the cool thing about doing it this way is you can also resize the picture. Okay. Now typically I don't want to you know distort it like that at all. So maybe in this case, if I know that I don't want to distort it, can I actually mess with the aspect ratio? You'll see that it's not an option over here. So the way that I always keep my logo it, within the aspect ratio is I hold down shift while I drag from a corner. And now you'll notice that as you hold down shift, it'll always keep that aspect ratio. So that's another little shortcut there. And now I can move the logo wherever I want to. Maybe I want it really small on the page. Okay. And I want it right down there. Okay, good. So that's how we uh, group objects and save them as a picture so that when we want to move them, we have no problem. And remember, the shortcut for aspect ratio is to hold down shift while you drag in and out, and that'll always keep the aspect ratio the same. So hopefully this video has helped you out. It's uh, taught you a little bit more about grouping images, cropping images, and eventually saving them as a logo. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this, please put it in the comment section. I'll do my best to help you out. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.